The vice presidential candidates had a debate this week, and that's been taking up a lot of the headlines, so it might have been easy to miss that the Senate candidates for Pennsylvania, this is U.S. Senate, Bob Casey and Dave McCormick also had a debate this week. This one was honestly painful to sit through. Now, the reason why I found it annoying to sit through is both of them. They're both guilty of this. Constant, constant jabs at each other, to the point where it's hard to even parse the substance out of what they were saying. It's hard to hear their thoughts on the issues in between all the attacks, and it's the same stale attack lines, too. I got so tired of hearing the same thing over and over from both of them by the end of this 50-minute debate. I think the reason they did it this way is because, first of all, the debate is shorter than the presidential debates have been, shorter than the VP debate was, just 50 minutes as opposed to an hour and a half. I actually think it was supposed to be a 45-minute time slot, but they went a little over. But that combined with the fact that, let's face it, this election has been getting a lot less coverage. It's been really overshadowed by the presidential election. So for both of them, I imagine this debate is the big event of the election. We have, what, like 12 people paying attention to this debate instead of 10 like on a normal day? Which is sad that it's getting overshadowed so much because this is an important position. But when they have so little attention on a normal day and on this debate they're getting slightly more attention, they have to really, really work to pack into that 45-minute time slot all the attack points of the entire campaign, all the reasons why you should vote against their opponent. There was so much packed in there, it felt so annoying to listen to. And what makes it worse is how fast they were talking. I think they knew ahead of time that they would really need to pack their message into a condensed time slot. I noticed the amount of time they had for the actual question and for the rebuttals was less than the presidents and the VPs had. So they really had to talk like an auctioneer, pack all the information in there. Even for me, even for this Pennsylvanian, Pennsylvania is one of the fastest talking on average states in the nation. But even for me, I had to slow down the video to actually give myself time to comprehend what they were saying. So what were the most common attack lines I heard? The number one thing that got hit way, 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 way too much. That horse is long, long dead by now. Casey saying that McCormick is a hedge fund manager who invested in Chinese companies, and the Chinese companies he invested in produce fentanyl. Over and over and over again to the point where, honestly, I felt kind of numb listening to it. Like, that particular line got old, at least for me. Like, my eyes glaze over by the end of the video. It loses its effect. I don't know if I'm just projecting what I want to be felt onto that, because I do support McCormick, but that's how it felt to me. The other thing that Casey says, of course, is McCormick lives in Connecticut, which I'm not too concerned about that. I even got into that in a previous video when I was talking about Oz versus Fetterman. With Oz, I think the biggest concern was his Turkish dual citizenship. He has property in Pennsylvania. This is, goes for McCormick, too. They qualified for whatever legal qualification it takes to run in Pennsylvania. So be it. And in McCormick's case, his family actually has been in Pennsylvania for several generations. The story behind the Connecticut thing I grudgingly had to learn because I'm not super inclined to care is that he has an ex-wife in Connecticut, and the kids have to split their time between the two parents, so he wants to be closer to his kids. And now for McCormick's worn-out attack lines. CaseyLies.com, if I had a dollar for every time he said that, and if I had a dollar for every time Casey brought up McCormick's China investments, do not make a drinking yam out of that, you will die. One good zinger that McCormick actually did get out there, though, is Puxatani Bob. Of course, Pennsylvanians know Puxatani Phil, that's the groundhog that comes out on Groundhog's Day, he either sees a shadow or he doesn't. McCormick said Puxatani Bob only comes out once every six years during election time, but other than that, he stays inside and does nothing. That made me, at the very least, chuckle, and I think because of that little bit of humor value, it's gonna stick in the voters' minds. Yeah, it's a little cheesy, but it's memorable. And then something they slung at each other, both of them did this, the idea that they vote along party lines too much. They are weak in the face of pressure from their own party. But throughout this debate, they ended up just pivoting away from the actual substance of the question they're supposed to answer, and instead going way off topic for just jabs at each other. The moderator actually literally said at one point, I don't want this to be a tennis match. That's a direct quote. Because just so often they're obligated to give this guy and then give that that guy back and forth, back and forth, these 15 second rebuttals that they use to just throw more jabs at each other. And it was so exhausting to watch. But let's get into talking about some of the actual questions. The very first one, right off the bat, they did not shy away from the big issues. The very first question was about Iran and Israel. The question was, do you support boots on the ground, American boots on the ground? Of course, both of them are on record supporting Israel. And then the follow-up question for that, most of these questions did have a follow-up that was related to the first question. Follow-up was, is there a line that Israel could 
could possibly cross that would make you stop supporting them. Ultimately, I found both of their answers to this one to be kind of vague, but that's the nature of foreign wars. The situation can change so fast, asking one question and then holding each other to that answer months or even weeks or sometimes even days later, that just doesn't make sense. So I can give them both a pardon for not giving a clear answer on this. But one good thing that McCormick said was Casey's previous support of the Iran deal. That was all the way back at the end of Obama's term. Those of you with long memories might remember a big plane with just pallets of cash going directly to Iran in exchange for, I forget exactly what it was, something along the lines of a promise not to develop nuclear weapons or maybe even permission to inspect nuclear facilities. I, I don't know. The next question was the border. Now, both of these guys, at least so they claim, support stronger border security. McCormick pointed out that Casey did not support the wall in the past. Casey referenced a border bill that McCormick is on record as standing against. A question I actually did find interesting was on the economy. Casey was the one to answer that question first. He started talking about price gouging and shrinkflation, and possibly using the AG's office to go after companies that engage in that stuff. McCormick, though, says, correctly by the way, that the inflation is caused by high government spending. And then he went on to compare Casey's price gouging tirade to communist price controls. Which, for the two people whose eyes hadn't glazed over yet at how often they insult each other, for the people who were paying attention enough to parse the actual answer out of all the jabs, over and over, China, China, Connecticut, Connecticut. People who hadn't tuned out yet because of all that, I think for those few people, this question was a win for McCormick. Then they went on to abortion. Of course, obligatory, the Democrat has to give examples of some woman who died and claim it's because she didn't have access to an abortion. Of course, obligatory, the Republican has to say that the Democrat wants abortion up to the point of birth. Of course, both of those things get hurled around. But in the middle of that, McCormick actually did give one policy proposal. He wants to see a tax credit given to people who seek fertility treatment because he says the cost of that is too high. He wants more people to have access to it. On to the filibuster. This one blew my mind. So the moderator starts out the question, right? Starts out asking about the concept of lowering the filibuster threshold to 51 votes specifically for the abortion issue. Now, Bob Casey could have just stuck with abortion and ran with it, but no, 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 no. Let me tell you what Bob Casey did. Bob Casey said he wants to remove the filibuster. Why? Why, you ask, does he want to remove the filibuster? Because he wants to pass more background check requirements for gun sales. In Pennsylvania, a state with as many hunters as we have, in the year of our Lord, 2024, where even a critical mass on the left has given up supporting new gun control, Casey with a straight face said that he wants to abolish the filibuster to pass more gun control. I just can't get over that one. And McCormick, of course, he had a golden opportunity here to bash Casey over the head for that one. He didn't take it. Instead, he got distracted by Casey's jabs, and he started talking about Kamala's policy that the Democrats want to push through, and they want to abolish the filibuster for that. Okay, me. Joe Nobody. Me. I could have rebutted Casey's answer to that better than McCormick did. Got the timer? 30 seconds. Let's go. The Founding Fathers wanted the Senate to be the House of Congress, where bad bills that make it past the House too fast get slow down and they have a lot of time to examine them. Bills such as the gun control that my opponent just said he supports. Now back to the abortion issue, I have a message for Democrats. If the more hardline members of my party try to pass a national abortion ban and we don't have the filibuster in the Senate, then I won't be able to stand up there, take up the Senate's time by telling them to their faces the importance of personal liberty to this country and the importance of keeping the federal government out of our personal lives. Boom, that would have been a knockout blow if McCormick delivered that, but no. On such an important thing, it just frustrates me that Casey had such a poor position and McCormick flubbed the response to it. Next question was fracking. McCormick starts off, he talks about energy independence. He talks about the possibility of no longer needing to import energy from foreign nations. I agree with that position. I know not everyone does. Casey, of course, gets distracted, goes off the rails talking about China. Dave McCormick, hedge fund manager, invested in China. No substance, but that's okay because they're both guilty of going off the rails to insult each other too much. But then the moderator pulls out a really interesting question question. Applause to the moderator, by the way, for thinking of this one. It's a more local issue. It's a state-level issue. Three Mile Island. Have you heard of Three Mile Island, where they had one of the worst nuclear meltdowns in history? Well, Microsoft would like to purchase and reopen one of those nuclear reactors. The owner of the land is on board with it. Microsoft wants to use that energy to power new AI systems. They asked the candidates if they would support federal subsidy for that, because, of course, they are applying for federal subsidy. Casey says, yes, he wants all kinds of energy, including nuclear. McCormick 
McCormick says, yes, he's in favor of energy, just not the inflation subsidies for all the different kinds of green energy that the left is supporting. And McCormick got off another good line at this point. Direct quote, he's contributed to red tape that essentially bans fracking without actually banning fracking, end quote. But again, you have to really read into it before you're able to glean substance out of this because both of them get distracted so many times. Follow-up question to that, though. What do they think about a private company having control of a nuclear reactor? Casey, I could not glean a solid yes or a no out of him for this. McCormick says yes, but they need oversight and regulation. Spends about three seconds talking about that before getting distracted and, uh talking about the border for some reason when they're on a question about nuclear power. Next up, they get into a question about tariffs, specifically the Trump tariffs on China. Both of the candidates had very similar answers to that. Yes, they support Trump's strategic use of tariffs to correct trade imbalances and support American industry over foreign industry. The last question was something I didn't really see coming because honestly, I haven't been paying attention enough to this campaign. I pay attention to this election more than the average person, I think, but I still didn't know this part. The moderator poses the the question to McCormick saying, McCormick has in the past supported a social media ban for children under a certain age and says that this is part of a mental health crisis in the country. McCormick says, yes, social media contributes to declining mental health, but then he slightly shifts the question, stays sort of on topic, talks about mental health of veterans. Casey, in his response, talks about a bill he supported that supposedly, according to him, would have increased privacy and safety for children using the internet. And then, of course, Casey also said a piece about veterans' mental health. Casey's closing statement was pretty unremarkable. Not great, not terrible, just as expected. McCormick's statement was pretty much the same. However, I didn't notice the absence of this topic until McCormick brought it up in his closing statement. Brought up the trans people in sports topic. I would say that's an important topic. It's a topic I care about. It's a topic I want to hear more about. I would like to see puberty blockers banned. I would like to see more sports leagues have rules against people competing against the opposite sex. I would like to see gender reassignment surgery not allowed for people under the age of 18, or even better, 21. And these are things that I did not see talked about at all during this debate. Now, who do I think won? While McCormick did get off a few good lines, I think they did end up getting lost amid the sea of both candidates getting so far distracted, so far off track, almost the entire debate, and just jabbing at each other senselessly. I would say very, very, very slightly McCormick did a little bit better in this debate than Casey, but I would also say Casey has a lot of name recognition. Casey is the incumbent. I don't think this debate moved a lot of voters' minds. However, we shall see. In the past decade, Pennsylvania has had a lot of statewide elections go to the Democrats, in fact, almost every one of them. 2022 governor election, the gap was 15 points. Josh Shapiro won, he beat Dave Mastriano, Republican. 2022 Senate election, stroke victim John Fetterman beat Republican Oz by 5 points. In 2018 Senate election, Bob Casey, yes, the same Bob Casey, beat Lou Barletta by 13 points. And in the 2018 governor election, Tom Wolf beat Scott Wagner by a whopping 17 points. So Republicans have not been doing good in Pennsylvania statewide elections at all. I think McCormick is better than a lot of those previous candidates. I think McCormick will actually get within five points of winning that seat. The question is, will Scott Pressler's army of door knockers, army of voter registration people, bring enough magic to actually push McCormick over the finish line? I would like to see that. I hope they do. I am not holding my breath. One last thing I want to bring up is, I think the Democrats have a good strategy when they pick this attack line for this year. In the presidential election, they've been calling tariffs a national sales tax, saying that the tax on those companies importing those products will be tacked on to the products that the final consumer buys, essentially passing the cost on to the final buyer. And in this debate, we saw something sort of similar. Bob Casey was saying that tax cuts McCormick was in favor of are just going to increase the national debt because the government will have less tax revenue coming in. Now, this has led to something sort of interesting. We see Trump on the national stage saying no tax on tips, offering child tax credit, talking about other tax tax cuts as well. We see McCormick on this debate stage supporting an extension of Trump's tax cuts from his first term. Essentially, we're seeing an inverse of what we had a few years ago where the Democrats were the ones in favor of giving out a lot of welfare. Pre-COVID, that's what we saw, and the Republicans were usually more in favor of 
telling people to get a job and get back on their feet. But now, in the year 2024, we see Republicans offering a different kind of handout in the form of tax cuts, and we see Democrats who weren't concerned about the national debt when the Paris Climate Accord was getting voted on, now they're suddenly concerned about the national debt when we're talking about tariffs on China. So I see that talking point flipped in an interesting way that I wouldn't have expected last year before this election. We will see how it goes, we will see how the vote results turn out.